Okay, screw the intro. Chapter 248 leaks just dropped and holy shit. Holy shit. We're just gonna get straight into the breakdown because I can't... Holy shit. Obviously, the King of Curses is not dead, but Higuruma is dead and took Sukuna's cursed tool, Kamatoke, with him. Probably because it was still confiscated by Higuruma's cursed technique. And what a load of shit that cursed tool was. Literally only existed to save Sukuna's ass from confiscation. Kashima was undamaged, it killed a couple of crows, got confiscated, and then deleted from existence. Like, what? Anyway, Sukuna notices that Yuji's stomach is fully healed from his newly learned reverse curse technique. That's right, Itadori learned a way advanced form of reverse curse technique in only a month. Good shit, Itadori. That shit is fucking impressive. You healed your entire stomach. Sukuna Sukuna sees Wee Wee. Wee 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 Wee. You, 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 Wee. Ah, uh, Wee Wee. Thanks, you sadistic bitch. Sukuna sees Wee Wee teleport Higuruma's body away and realizes that's why Gojo's corpse is also missing. Gojo fans gonna get real excited about this, so Gege makes sure to explain that their bodies will not be saved by reverse curse technique. He explains that performing reverse curse technique on others is only about 50% as effective as when you perform it on yourself. And he also points out that Shoko's reverse curse technique is nothing compared to that of Sukuna and Gojo. Although any real JJK fan knows that Wee Wee did not take Gojo's body and he actually healed himself in all the commotion and then said, simply got up, walked off, and went to give Suguru Gato's body a proper funeral. Guys, it it's a joke. It's obviously copium. Just let me enjoy this moment, okay? It's, it's fine, I have hope. Anyway, Sukuna turns his focus to Yuji now, and literally just the sight of Yuji makes Sukuna so fucking frustrated that he starts questioning his own existence and spaces the fuck out. Also, what is my guy doing? Sukuna, you're meant to be this big intimidating monster, but when you stand like that, all I can think of is a fucking overused internet meme. Sukuna gives us a big internal monologue, which is hard to understand because of the translation still being pretty rough, although it's easy enough to get the general gist of it. Sukuna has absolutely no motive, no cliche tragic villain backstory. He is simply bored, and he satisfies his boredom by playing with the lives of others. He challenges and kills whoever he pleases whenever he likes because there is no one strong enough to stand against him. He considers those who fight back, both from today and a thousand years ago. They give their lives to achieve their ideal of killing Sukuna, just like Higuruma did. And Sukuna just doesn't understand it. It calls back a lot to his conversation with Jogo. Jogo had this big ideal of creating a world purely of cursed spirits and was happy to give his life in order for that world to be achieved. But Sukuna said that he should have just used his strength to burn everything down. And actually that conversation perfectly summarizes Sukuna's thought process here. Now the reason he is frustrated is due to Itadori's indomitable soul. I really hope I pronounced that word correctly. Sukuna knows from being in Itadori, that sounds bad. Sukuna knows that Yuji Itadori's soul endures. No matter how many times it's beaten down, it always comes back. Sukuna in no way sees Itadori as a physical threat, although he acknowledges that he can match him in the aspect of sticking to your ideals. This sentiment actually perfectly reflects Itadori's character, and I love it. From all the way back when he was talking about having the perfect death, from not wanting to be executed at least until he could take Sukuna with him. It is Itadori's ideal to kill Sukuna, and he will not allow himself to die until it's achieved, unlike all the other sorcerers that Sukuna has killed. That is what only Itadori matches as Sukuna in, and that is the cause of Sukuna's frustration. Sukuna is so determined now to put an end to Yuji and to destroy his ideals completely, to shred them up. We now swap to Kusakabe GPT's perspective as Kogen appears before Sukuna. Also, for some reason Gege decided to draw Ino as a demonic gorilla. I don't know. Kogen announces that Megami, meaning Sukuna, should kill all of the curling game players and start the merger with Tengen. Now I've realized this is what Kenjaku meant by his will being carried on. He made sure to leave a backup plan in place in case he was killed, meaning that Sukuna would still make the merger go through. Kusakabe explains that their priority was actually killing Kenjaku in order to prevent an extinction level event, whereas Sukuna has no interest in causing the extinction of humanity simply to satisfy their own curiosity. Hell, Kusakabe was happy to accept defeat against Sukuna if Kenjaku was stopped. He was happy to live in a world where Sukuna was just roaming around free if it meant that humanity could survive, which honestly, it does make sense. Sukuna is actually just the lesser threat here. Kenjaku was going to wipe out all of humanity, at least all of humanity in Japan. But even after Yuta killed Kenjaku, his plan will carry on. And honestly, it shouldn't have been that hard to see it coming because it's Kenjaku we're talking about. After hearing Koge, Sukuna says he is done playing now. And remember, that's Sukuna's whole thing. It's playing. He literally plays with the lives of others. Sukuna says he's going to kill all of the people around him and then all the culling game players in order to start the merger with Tengen. He then expresses interest in challenging or playing with the Tengen merger curse, which honestly, if all our favorite characters have to die in order for me to see Sukuna versus this massive Tengen curse, then I'm all for it. I think that would be fucking awesome. Remember, Kenjaku's whole plan was to push the limits of cursed energy to its full potential. And remember, Kenjaku considered Sukuna Sukuna the current limit. He was the standard that everyone else was held against. But as much as Kenjaku acknowledged Sukuna was the strongest, he never gave up on his plan because he thought he could push it further. He wanted to exceed the current limits. He wanted to create something beyond even Sukuna. So assuming his plan works, the Tengen curse should actually be stronger than Sukuna. At least that was Kenjaku's intention because he's trying to push the already established limits, which are embodied by Sukuna. Okay, now for the craziest part of the chapter. And honestly, I don't think the ending of a chapter has ever blue balls me harder than this one. Yuta fucking 
Okotsu smashes through a building or some shit and does not waste any time in throwing himself at the King of Curses. Now I'm struggling to understand what exactly I'm seeing here. Tsukuna looks like he does the hand sign and movement for a dismantle attack, but Yusa just blocks that shit, no damage taken. What's more likely is that Tsukuna just reinforced a hand with cursed energy and blocked Yusa's katana strike. Although that doesn't really explain why the panel emphasized Tsukuna doing the dismantle hand sign. Either way, Yusa gets away unharmed. Now I'm legit gonna make a separate video on this Yusa versus Tsukuna fight because there is genuinely so much to unpack here. I will give a rundown now though. Tsukuna addresses Yuta, saying Yuta needs to kill him or all of his loved ones will die around him. And this is so significant to Yuta's character, I love it. Ever since his introduction, he has been driven by his need to protect his friends. He outright says he wants to feel like he's needed, and this is discussed more in his fight against Uro, where he says that he is strong because of his loved ones around him. So yeah, pressure's on Yuta. Rika took serious offence to this comment and fucking towers over Tsukuna, attempting to crush him in her palm. But Tsukuna just holds her whole ass hand up and says, so here's the queen. And I don't care if Tsukuna said this in a demeaning or patronising way, I don't give a fuck. It's so fucking cool to hear Tsukuna address Rika as the queen of curses. And then the chapter fucking ends saying, king of curses versus queen of curses. The one to sit on the throne will be decided now. And now we've got a fucking week's break and I can't do this shit anymore. Now I'm going to cover this more in a separate video video because holy shit Gege is cooking. For those of you who think Tsukuna will one-shot off-screen Yuta, I am 99% sure that is not going to happen. And don't get me wrong, Tsukuna probably could, but he's greedy. He plays with his food. That was the whole point of this chapter, is emphasizing how he plays with everybody. There are so many people on the battlefield right now he could just kill in an instant, but he's not. Tsukuna always plays around with his opponents. In fact, the only one who didn't really get that treatment was Kashimo, because he was already coming off the high of playing around with Gojo. And don't forget, Yuta is the second, well, actually, fuck that, Yuta is the current strongest modern day sorcerer. Why would he not want to play around with him? Why would he just have his fun fighting Gojo and then be like, eh, fuck this. And it's not like he's looking at fucking Kusakabe or Meimei over here like, yeah, they're a real challenge, I'm gonna play with them for a bit. No, but Yuta, yes. So even if he could completely slam Yuta, it doesn't matter. We can get a really fucking good fight out of this, just like we did against Gojo. And don't forget, Yuta is now the current strongest modern day sorcerer. I am also pretty certain that both Sukuna and Yuta's abilities are going to get fully explained in this fight, and I cannot fucking wait. As I said in my Yuta is broken video, Gege has been strangely secretive about Yuta's abilities and his domain expansion. He's been taking a very show and not tell approach when it comes to both Sukuna and Yuta's abilities. He showed the black box in Sukuna's fight against Jogo without explaining, and he showed Yuta's copy ability in Volume 0 and Sendai Colony without explaining it. Every other significant character gets ability explanations, but Gege has been selectively secretive about both of these characters. And don't forget, Yuta has an unseen domain expansion as well. Given all of that, I think we're going to get a fucking awesome fight. Possibly my favourite so far, since Yuta is my favourite character in all of Jujutsu Kaisen. I have a lot more to say about this Sukuna vs Yuta fight, so make sure to keep an eye out for my next video. Just before we finish though, I wanted to point out one more key thing. Something I don't see enough people talking about, and something I think will be very important very soon. Where is Maki? 